We're already halfway through the year, so it's time to share some opinions that clearly no one will get pissy about in the comments. The music's bad and you should feel bad. These are my favorite metal albums of 2024 so far, and we're starting with Aborted with Vault of Horrors. <laughs> The Belgian kings of modern death metal still killing it 12 albums in since 1999. And with their biggest list of guest spots yet with someone on every single track from Shadow of Intent, Flesh God Apocalypse, Angel Maker, Cryptopsy, Ingested, Engulf, Archspire, Signs of the Swarm, Of Sulfur, and Despised Icon. My personal favorite is probably Ali from Archspire on The Shape of Hate since his machine gun vocals meld perfectly with the lightning fast music. But there are plenty of other tracks that instantly got their hooks in me as well, like Death Cult, Insect Politics, and The Golgotha. Frankly, every song here is fantastic with a start-to-finish flow that has an emphasis on speed and heaviness, but masterfully broken up by the melodic and atmospheric elements. Then we have Midnight with Hellish Expectations. The This is the album I've been wanting this Cleveland black and speed metal band to make since the very beginning. For all the hype, I've always found myself lukewarm on their recordings, especially the more they have ventured into longer tracks. In my opinion, their strength has always been that Venom-esque, straight-for-the-throat energy, and with the release of single Fuck Off and Live, my prayers for that were finally answered. <laughs> Ten tracks, all under three minutes, and for a seriously lean runtime of 26 minutes, not a second of it wasted on anything less than full speed ahead, motorcycle exhaust, and blasphemy. Brevity is the soul of wit, but apparently also horny, devil-worshipping punk in speed metal. Then we have Borknagar with Fall. <laughs> This Norwegian progressive black metal band back for their 12th album since forming during the second wave all the way back in the 90s. Summits makes for an excellent single and opener with the perfect contrast of harsh, ominous, classic black metal verses with Vortex's soaring clean chorus. And speaking of which, this may have some of Vortex's best performances of all time and an already impressive career on tracks like Moon. Really stunning production too, once more really capturing the chill in the air and every impact of the drums. Another tour de force and a case of every track having something special to offer while contributing to a larger and deeply profound whole. Top three for them if you ask me. You can check out my tier list for more thoughts on their discography. Next up we have Noel with As Spoken. As much as I love Full of Hell and their new release this year, I think as far as like chaotic, insane asylum music goes, this is the one. From the first seconds of the opening title track, this Tennessee band brings all of the violent chaos I've been waiting to see matched since Trumpeting Ecstasy. While also channeling further sickness in the likes of Lord Mantis, Portal, Alterage, Vermin Womb, and Imperial Triumphant. This is another spiraling vortex into oblivion with guitars like swarming locusts and blackened vocals that slice like an obsidian blade. Completely devoid of light, in fact, it seems to suck down any ounce of it in the immediate vicinity. Someone once told me time is a flat circle. Yo, we have plenty more albums to go, but if you're enjoying the video so far, be sure to like and comment your own favorites, and also consider subscribing if you're new here. I put out videos like this at least twice a week, or become a member if you're already a subscriber and get some extra perks from that. But next up, we have Apogean with Cyberstrictive. <laughs> The latest project featuring Max Smith, who has done killer vocals for the likes of Croesus, Alter Beast, and Hammer of Dawn. I'm a big fan of what Mac brings to the table, and he fits in here perfectly, bringing deathly low growls and phlegmy high snarls, alongside a great mix of brutal technicality, melodic riffing, and irresistible grooves I'd compare to Entheos. <laughs> Absolutely dizzying guitar work, but once more expertly woven into progressive songwriting that I find highly engaging and rarely predictable. On my first listen, I kept waiting to land on a filler track and it just never happened, so if anything, it just gets better. Then maybe the biggest underdog on this list, we have Lou Kelly with Never Was. <laughs> Never was. 
The return of one of my favorite underground projects around and a busy one at that. Lou is like the Mike Patton for a new generation, bringing a weirdness that knows no genre bounds. And also, he just seems like a really chill dude. And once more, never was defies concise stylistic labeling while also unleashing arguably some of his heaviest songs to date. <laughs> Within seconds, song will navigate between death metal, jazz, mathcore, and more. Notably, this album is made up of songs he originally wrote for a project he tried to start with friends in 2016, and only now decided to go back to add vocals and turn it into a concept album for the band that never was. Then we have Cavalera Conspiracy with Schizophrenia re-recorded. <laughs> The Brazilian Madmen have done it again, taking one of my favorite albums from the Sepultura catalog and remaking it as raw and heavy as ever. I recently did a video on the best and worst remade metal albums out there, and this is absolutely how you do it right. Update the production, get the rights back in your hands as the musician, but all the while deeply understanding and respecting everything that made the original so impactful to begin with. Not only did they largely keep the original arrangements, the production still maintains that 80s metal spirit. The mix is fuller, but not at all glossy. From the distortion to the heavy use of reverb, this is the perfect balance of old and new. Good! You didn't screw up! Then we have the last 10 seconds of life with No Name Graves. <laughs> It's been kind of a slow year for Deathcore, and frankly, I thought that Darko was going to take this spot, but this Pennsylvania crew has easily managed to top the pack so far for me. Something I appreciate about these guys is that they ignore most of the oversaturated modern tropes of the genre in favor of just the more pummeling and often hardcore-inspired sound of groups like the Acacia Strain. Songs are often molasses slow to only further emphasize each snare hit like one extended breakdown. Furthermore, Tyler Beam continues to prove an excellent choice since replacing John Robert Centurino in 2022. His deep, deathy growls are seriously imposing and definitely tap into my lizard brain. Every syllable feels like a sledgehammer to the cranium. Ooh, then we have Candy with It's Inside You. With its dark and degenerate fusions of hardcore, industrial, and electronics, Candy is just what the doctor ordered for this fan of all of those genres. If they were heavy on their own, the pain they bring together is exponential. And as much as people mock record scratching in metal, these guys pull it off without an ounce of cheesiness. <laughs> Even a more melodic track like Love Like Snow delivers plenty of attitude, and then there's the very Crystal Castle sounding dancing to the infinite beat and breakbeats of hypercore. Just gnarly, gnarly stuff. Oh, gnarly! Then we have Knocked Loose with You Won't Go Before You're Supposed To. People in my audience continue to be very vocal about either loving or hating this metallic hardcore band's vocals in particular, but I'll say once more that I am very much down with the arf arf. They give the already pummeling chaos an extra unhinged quality right from the first scream of thirst. And why do you want them to sound like everybody else? We have plenty of bands that are alternatives where you can get this same style of music with deeper vocals like Harm's Way and Jesus Peace. But yeah, album three and they haven't lost an ounce of the intensity and more great guest appearances here too, like the unexpected expected poppy collab on Suffocate. Even the Chris Motionless feature manages to bring the walls down despite bringing back that same corny pre-breakdown lyric that will continue to bother me. But anyways, I loved A Different Shade of Blue, and honestly, this one may go even harder in places. Like then we have Ishan with Ishan. In case you've been living under a rock, Ishan is an incredibly multi-talented Norwegian musician who initially made a name for himself as frontman of the mighty symphonic black metal progenitors Emperor. For most, that would be more than enough to secure a legacy, but his solo work is arguably even more impressive in some ways, and it comes full circle here with this being the most symphonically focused album he's probably ever done.
We're talking full orchestra and even an alternate orchestral only version alongside his eclectic melding of black metal and progressive music. Again, for those less familiar, I would easily pair this and any of his other records with the modern albums of Enslaved, and frankly, this quickly became my second favorite of his solo works just behind Arctis. Then we have Zombie Shark with Die Laughing. I want my life back Longtime viewers should be familiar with Corey's work as he has been on the podcast. His poster from the previous album is on the back wall behind me. And also the talented artist, he designed the Neon Skeletor artwork for our Metal Trenches merch line. Buy now. Buy it! Buy it now! That aside, you MySpace era cyber grinders out there are going to love his violent fusions of industrial, breakbeat, math core, hyper pop, Nintendo core, and grind. <laughs> With 16 tracks over just 30 minutes, every second is jam-packed with dense and unpredictable shifting soundscapes seemingly designed to twist your brain in knots. I could again draw some stylistic comparisons to Darko and also The Armed, but Zombie Shark is maybe more eclectic and ambitious in scope than either. Then we have LKVGT with Manish Omarming van Ein Olamvatend Nitz. <laughs> Not even close. There have been a lot of amazing underground albums on the Best of Bandcamp series this year, but this one really captured my interest probably the most. And all the more impressive as it's the very first release from this Netherlands avant-garde extreme metal band that defies simple genre description. I hear touches of everything from Death Spell Omega and Full of Hell to pure HM2 buzzsaw old school death metal. Closing track, Nerdkrit, at times even sounds like a collision of Converge with Cryptopsy. If I could compare their overall approach to one band, it would be Balanced Interruption. They share a similar emphasis on experimentation. If I could compare their overall approach to one band, it would be Balanced Interruption. They share a similar emphasis on experimentation, variety, and an absolutely wicked bass player. Then we have Thanatotherion with Alienation Manifesto. One of our most recent additions, this is fast, ferocious, and technically oriented black metal from members of Ulthar, Vastum, and Black Fucking Cancer. Between the vicious snarls and chaotic drumming, I definitely recommend this to fans of Absu, but I'm also getting notes of everything from early enslaved to gore guts and artificial brain. <laughs> Some spooky synth work and ambient interludes to break up the aggression too. Banger of a record and easily one of my favorite black metal albums of the year so far. And then holding the line since January, I think my favorite metal album of the year so far still goes to Job for a Cowboy with Moon Healer. After a decade, they are back, and I feel confident in saying that the wait was well worth it. This album is like a cross between Rivers of Nile, Inanimate Existence, and The Black Dahlia Murder. Really ripping into the guitar, and some of these bass sections just straight up turned me into the skull from the cover art. <laughs> Notably, Naveen Koperweiss of Entheos and formerly Animals as Leaders drums on the album, making for another welcome addition, and of course Johnny still killing it on vocals. I always say that comeback albums are extra hard, as with every year away, the expectation only gets more and more unreachable, but goddamn, Job for a Cowboy nailed it right through the final notes of the forever. Y'all check out this playlist to hear more of my favorite metal albums from this year by month, or check out this video for whatever YouTube feels like they want to recommend you. Again, like, comment, and subscribe, but that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.